liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my redeemer liveth.
you may be seated. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to the wisdom. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was the beginning now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we represent the Rock Hill Alumni Chapter of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. And today we're here to do a ceremonial burial service for our dear brother. Uh, we sent out condolences and prayers to the family. I hope in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth, the eternal God is the refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. Let us pray. O oh God of our, from everlasting to everlasting, the source of all life and the victor over death, show us thy will and lead us in thy way. Attune our hearts to the veil message of death and it is intricate involvement in the life process. In the midst of change, reveal to us the unchanging truth of thy constancy, that our faith may be anchored, anchored in the unending circle of eternity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Out of the depth, I have cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive. To the voice of my supplications. If thou, Lord, should have marked the equities. O Lord, who shall stand? For there is forgiveness with thee. That thou mayest be feared. I wait for thee, Lord, my soul never <clears throat> breathe. And in his words do I hope. My soul waiteth. For the Lord more than they that they have watched for the morning. I say, more than they that have watched for the morning. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. And as it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. We'll now do the camera. Thank you. 
The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If it be so that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed to us. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. 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 The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be, blessed be the name of the Lord. And as much as it pleased Almighty God to take our brother from us, we bow in humble submission in his holy will. This we do, not in unrelenting sorrow at those who see physical death as a final end, but with the faith of those who know the circle can never be broken. For once having entered into the bond of this noble plan, we are linked with those who have gone before and those who come after. We are so stupid about death. We will not learn. How is the wages paid to those who earn? How is the gift for which on earth we yearn? To set free from bondage to the flesh. How is it turn the sea corn into grain? How is it winning heaven's eternal reign? How it means freedom evermore from pain? How it untangles every mortal flesh? We are so unselfish, we are so selfish about death, we count, we count our deed. For more than we consider, there we be. Whom the greater reaper gathers in the ship, for more to know the season's constant change. And we, and we forget what it means all in life. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace and tender our gratitude for our brother's life and work and beseech the Father for his compassion and comfort. O supreme architect of the universe, in whose mind there is always purpose, we praise thee for thy good gift of life, for its wonder and ministry, its friendships and fellowships. We thank thee for the ties which bind us one to another. Show us the meaning which lies hidden in the heart of sorrow, this is disappointment and grief. We thank thee for this thy servant, for recalling him in those things which make others love him. Grant us, dear God, the comfort of thy presence, now in the continuous solace of the Holy Spirit. Help us to walk amid the things of this world with eyes open to the beauty and glory of the eternal. That so among the sundry and manifold changes of this life, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power now and forever. Amen. This now concludes the ceremony. We have a proclamation that we also want to read. Brother McGriff.
was a member of the Northern Province of Kappa Alpha Psi, which comprises Michigan, Western New York, Northwest Ohio, and Canada. On behalf of the Honorable Michael J. Kenlock, who is the current hallmark of the Northern Province of Kappa Alpha Psi, we present this proclamation to Brother McGriff's family. For the sake of time, I won't read the entire proclamation, because I know we want to get on with the service, but I will read a few things. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. That's Revelations 14 and 13. To the family of Brother Benny J. McGriff, Alpha Lambda, 1969, the pole mark of the Northern Province of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, and the officers and members of the Northern Province extend our condolences to you and other family members and friends. It is with heartfelt sadness that we express our deepest sympathy in the loss of your loved one and our brother, whom we consider in Kappa now as we the golden shore. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We pray God blesses you and that you find refuge and strength during your time of bereavement. Respectfully submitted, Michael J. Kenlock, Northern Province, Poland.
time to order service calls for Anita, Grip, and the selection. When I 
families and this immediate family and to all of you who gather here today. We are thankful for the opportunity to honor the life of Jenny Richard McGriff, a man of uh, many facets. We thank God for him and our prayers are with you. The Old Testament reading comes from the comforting psalm of David, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Yes. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in pathways of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through valleys of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil, for the Lord is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. Yeah. He prepares a table before me in the very presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, uh -huh. surely, yeah. Yeah. goodness yes, sir. and mercy yeah. shall follow me all the days of my life. Yeah. And I will dwell in the house yeah. of the Lord forever. And ever. Uh -huh. Thus ends the reading of God's word. May He bless our hearts. Amen. to God who is indeed the head of my life, to my pastor, the other pastors and ministers on the podium, to the pastor of this great church, to my family, my sister, to the children. At a time like this, the only thing that we can say to the entire McGriff family is that if you need us, we're here. We're right here. We won't leave you. We don't go anywhere. When the phone calls stop, we're still right here. So know that we love you, that you have family beyond family, because my big brother set a standard that is so awesome it is hard to put it into words because he was consistent right. with who God right. called him to be Amen. in whatever he needed he was a prayer warrior he was places that people do not know that he was All right. All right. because he was a man of integrity right. so those prayers and those things that you gave to him, they stayed with him. You didn't have to worry about seeing them on a billboard or anything else. He was the colonel. And he stood on his on God's word and on his integrity. So those of us that are connected to him, what I have found in coming here to Lancaster, is all of those things, all those people that he helped, all of those things that he stood for, we stand under those same things. We receive welcome that we didn't realize we would receive. So in that, I say hallelujah anyway. I will be reading to you 2 Timothy 4. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust that shall they heap to themselves teachers 
having itchy ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fable. But watch thou in all things, endure the endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, be full of proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Verse 22. The Lord Jesus Christ be with thy spirit. Grace be with you. Amen. I have read to you 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 8 and 22. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of his holy word. Shall we pray? Most gracious Father, we come before you as humbly as we know how. Father, we understand that you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, Lord God. We understand that you created us in all that we are. And Father, we say thank you for that. Lord God, we stand before you. We are actually kneeling, Lord God, before you. For you have taken one of the greatest examples to your bosom. My brother, Reverend Benny McGriff. Yeah. As he would say, Reverend Benny Richard McGriff. Lord God, we thank you in all that he was. We thank you for the gifts. We thank you for the outstanding character. We thank you for the example that he was. We thank you thank for you. the prayers and the service. We thank you for him just standing with an awesome smile on his face. Lord God, I never saw him with a harsh word. I never saw him turn anyone away. So Lord God, that is the example that has been set. And we ask and we pray, Lord God, that you allow us to follow you as he has followed. We ask, Lord God, right now that you touch his wife, that you anoint her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord God, for she still has to stand. We ask that you anoint each of the children, Lord God, for they still has to have to stand. But Lord God, we ask that right now, I'm praying for my pastor, I'm praying for my pastor right now, and I'm asking that you lift him up as only you can lift him up. I'm asking that you guard him, Lord God, for he has lost one of his own. I'm asking, Lord God, that in the midnight hour when we're going, wandering to and fro, and, and we're crying, and we're crying out, Lord God, we're asking that you uplift each of us as only he can do. And we're asking that you rock us in your bosom, Lord God, and you remind us that you have not forsaken us, that you are still right here with us, that you are caring and carrying us in the midnight hour, Lord God. We ask that everyone continue to put their arms around this family, continue to show them the example to which my brother has shown us, Lord God. Look after them to stand when they need us to stand, to hold them when we need when they need us to hold them, to make sure that they are consistently fed, to make sure that their spirits are consistently taken care of. For Lord God, we know that you have given us many promises on this earth, and we know that you have not failed us yet. We know that if you created us, that you shall keep us, and that if we continue within you, Lord God, that you will take us to your bosom. So, Lord God, we stand on that promise right now. Yeah. When the phone calls seek, cease, Lord God, uh, let the family know that we're still there. Lord God, when people start coming just to see what it is they can see, there are some of us that are still going to be there, Lord God. So we're just asking that you continue to anoint them, Lord God, that you continue to cover them, Lord God, that you continue yeah. to be the God that we know that you are. But Lord God, you said in your word, I am that I am. Which means that anything that we need you to be, any place that we need you to be, there we shall be. So Lord God, we're asking that you bless this home, boy. I know that my brother is looking down on us and saying, well done. So Lord God, we just pray 
morning right now, asking that you continue to keep us, continue to guide us in your will and your way. It's our prayer, in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Washington, thank you so much for your hospitality. Education played a significant role in Benny's 39 journey. He, in Benny's 39th journey, he graduated from the Lancaster County Public Schools in 1968 and continued his studies at South Carolina State University. At SCSU, he immersed himself in various activities including the first 101st Marching Band, ROTC, and membership in Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Benny's commitment to music led him to become a charter member of Kappa Alpha, Kappa, Kappa Psi Band Fraternity. He proudly earned his bachelor's degree in 1972. Following college, Benny joined the United States Army, where he served with distinction. After his discharge, he remained on the East Coast, transferring to the Army Reserve. His dedication to service extended over 39 years, accumulating in his retirement as a lieutenant colonel. In 1980, Benny's career brought him to Detroit, Michigan, where he met and married Letha Vanessa Moore. And let's give her a hand. A supportive wife. That union was blessed with over 40 years of marriage. Amen. Benny became an active member of Pleasant Grove Baptist Church. He loved Pleasant Grove and was always willing to do whatever needed to be done. He was an associate minister, Sunday school teacher, president of the male choir, prayer leader for Wednesday night prayer meeting, and facilitator for the Kingdom Men Bible Study. Benny's legacy lies not only in his professional achievements, but also in his unwavering commitment to family and community. He approached, he approached life with a calm demeanor, always ready to lend a listening ear. His brothers, nephews, and children sought his advice, even until adulthood. Benny's impact resonates throughout the lives he touched, and his memory will forever be cherished. Benny earned his heavenly wing on Saturday, July 13, 2024. He was preceded in death by two sisters, Drusella McGriff Gill and Vivian McGriff, six brothers, Willie McGriff Sr., Samuel L. McGriff Sr., James W. McGriff Sr., Blease L. McGriff, Paul M. McGriff, and David C. McGriff Sr., stepbrother Leonard Duke Duncan. Duncan. Left to cherish his memory are his devoted wife, Lisa Vanessa McGriff of Detroit, Michigan, three sons, Benny Christopher McGriff of California, Craig Fulton McGriff and Karen of Arlington, Texas, and Ronald Richard McGriff of Dallas, Texas. Two daughters, Dr. Leanne Vanessa McGriff of Charlotte, North Carolina, and Leslie Vanessa McGowan and Jacob of Cleveland, Ohio. 
two grandchildren, Craig Fulton McGriff of Arlington, Texas, and Xavier Lee McGowan, McCowan, excuse me, of Cleveland, Ohio. Two brothers, Robert Lee McGriff um, Jr. of Chicago, Illinois, and Charles Henry McGriff and Judy of Keelan, Texas. Stepbrother, Patrick Duncan, Duncan. Stepsister, Patricia Crawford Bobby of Orangeburg, South Carolina. Sister-in-laws, Pearl May McGriff, Edith McGriff, Beatrice McGriff, Priscilla McGriff, Carolyn McGriff, and Anita McGriff. One aunt, McGriff Horati of Zimbabwe, Africa, and a host of nieces, nephews, cousins, other relatives, and friends. Amen. The Cousins. Cousins, could you please stand? Resolution for Cousin Benny R. McGriff. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the but, which the Lord, righteous judge, shall give at that day. Not to me only, but unto all of them also that give in his appearance. 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. Whereas our Heavenly Father has called home his faithful child and our dear cousin, Reverend Benny Richard McGriff, our hearts are saddened by the earthly transition of this man of God who lived and served with dedicated distinction as a husband, father, grandfather, brother, uncle, friend to all, and so much more. Cousin Benny was a significant leadership catalyst for many years serving in multiple roles within the National Cousins Organization. Benny's passion, love, and commitment for all the families that comprise the Cousins is unmatched. His consummate knowledge of the Cousins National Historian is unwavered, unrivaled. Now our spirits are lifted with many beautiful memories of his anointed and remarkable life. Whereas Cousin Benny leaves a legacy of love to live by, compassion for others, and the love of God for comfort, sustenance, and peace. Be it resolved that the executive board of all family members that comprise the cousins stand ready and willing to assist Lisa and all the family in many ways possible, and know that we are lifting you in prayer and cherishing you in thoughts. Rest assured that God, is, God will take care of you, and that Jesus will stir that hope that is in your heart. We all share in your sorrow and extend to you our sincere and heartfelt sympathy during your bereavement. National Chairman Jelani Van Houten, Sheila Brevard, National Vice Chairman, Elaine Shannon, National Treasurer, Cheryl Hampton, National Secretary, Reverend Dr. Clark McGriff, National Chaplain, Benny McGriff, National Historian, <coughs> Gerald Brevard, National Parliamentarian, and Wybretra Crawford, National Youth Coordinator. Could the cousins please stand up at this time? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. You may be seated. Let's Amen. give them a hand. Thank you. And thank you to Reverend McGriff for serving on that committee and organization as the National Historian. I do have several more resolutions, however, I'm not going to read them in their entirety, so do not worry. I don't think my voice would allow me to do it if I wanted to. So let's hang in there. Let's see. A church resolution in love and memory and respect for Reverend Benny Richard McGriff. We, the members of Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church, acknowledge with sympathy and love the loss of Reverend Benny R. McGriff. We want Sister Vanessa McGriff and family to know that our hearts are with you as you gather to celebrate the life, love, and legacy of Reverend McGriff. We say to this family, be encouraged and know that the God of all comfort will keep and sustain you all the days of your life. Whereas Reverend Benny R. McGriff possessed, professed a love and faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, he was committed an active member of Pleasant Grove Baptist 
excuse me, Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church for many years, where he served as a member of the trustee ministry and president of the male course. Reverend McGriff was a faithful and devoted teacher of God's word by serving in the church surf school and kingdom meal Bible group and a mentor and friend to many. During the COVID pandemic and every year since, Reverend Benny McGriff coordinated and presided over the Wednesday evening hour of power prayer service. In fact, the Wednesday before he was called home, he delivered that message from here, and so many did not know that would be the last time we would hear that voice, but he was doing the Lord's work, Amen. even remotely. <laughs> Reverend McGriff was a reverent man who loved the Lord, his family, and church family. He served Christ by serving others. He, was an he had an extraordinary faith, view of the world around him, and shared that with everyone he met. His positive outlook on life and faith was an inspiration to everyone who met him. For he would often say, I look forward to living to be 120 years old because that is what God promised me in his word. Therefore, be it resolved that the Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church humbly bow to God's will and pray for our dear sister Vanessa McGriff and the family of the Reverend Benny R. McGriff. We thank God that Reverend McGriff was a part of our lives and a faithful member of our church family, and that his life touched so many lives for the kingdom of God by demonstrating Christian virtue and faith. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution will be given to Sister Vanessa McGriff, and a copy will be placed in the Southern Grove archives as well. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge the Lord, and he will direct that path. On behalf of our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Lewis Forsyth II, and our church clerk, Sister Toy Smith Allison. We have another resolution, and this one is from the Kingdom Men, and we do have several of them here with us from Detroit. In fact, all of those gentlemen from the Kingdom Men, could you please stand up? I think we have three or four present with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's give them a hand. Yeah. You may be seated. We have another resolution. This one comes from Reverend Jimmy McBride. He is our Director of Christian Education at the Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church. Any of the members that are part of the Christian Education, as well as that includes Sunday School, please stand at this time. We'll give us a wave. Don't be shy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You may be seated. Let's give them a hand. We also have a resolution from the director, Sister Patricia Ballard, of the male course at home. She is our director, and they sent a resolution as well. Um, several gentlemen that are here. I know we're doing a lot of up and down. They may be part of the male course. If you are, could you please stand away? Thank you. And we also have a resolution from the ministers and deacon wives. We have our chairman of the deacon board here, uh, Mr. Clark Bailey, as well as our first lady representing the minister and deacon wives. Could you all please stand? Thank you, our first lady. And lastly, and Pastor is probably going to do this anyway, but um, we also have several members, including myself, that traveled here from Detroit, Michigan, to be with this family, to let them know how much Reverend McGriff meant to us and how much the McGriff family means to us. Um, I can go all the way, way back, Australia more, and just everything. So I don't want to prolong this. But at this time, could all members of Pleasant Grove please stand up with me? Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. And we're asking again that you all give us traveling grace and mercy. Keep us in your prayers as we return back home. Again, on behalf of the 
Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church family, all these resolutions will be submitted and kept in our archives. And just know that we're here, as Minister Patrick said, it doesn't end now. It will continue. Amen. We know that Pleasant Grove has been here for you, and we will continue to be with you. God Amen. bless. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we have another final selection from Danita.
And I know many of us, those of us who are Bible students, those who have been to the Sunday school, we, we read through and the story about King Saul and King David and the conflict that existed between these two men. Uh, but there was one person that oftentimes is often overlooked. There are always these unsung heroes that oftentimes overlook. And there was one particular person, Abner, who, was, who played a very pivotal role in the development and the cohesiveness of Israel becoming a nation. Uh, we're there in 2 Samuel chapter 3, verse 30. Just one verse of scripture I'd like to call your attention to. And these are the words of David. It says, Then the king told, said this to his men. Do you not realize that a commander, a great man, a prince, has fallen in Israel this day? And I just want to take, if I could, just glean from this text, the title, A Great Servant of God Has Fallen. And not just a great servant, but a great teacher has fallen. A great preacher, a great husband, a great father, a great grandfather, a great brother, a great friend, a great soldier of the cross of Jesus Christ has fallen in the person of Reverend Benny McGriff. In 2 Samuel chapter 3, it tells the story of the untimely death of Abner. Abner was a cousin to Saul, who was the first king of Israel. And Abner later became a commander in chief of Saul's army. Later, Abner came under King David's favor. As Abner granted control over the tribe of Benjamin, he turned it over to David. This one act put Abner in David's favor. Uh, because for it made it possible that all the tribes of Israel would recognize David as their king. And as a result, of Abner's influence. David had a high regard. He had respect for Abner, who was a soldier. He was a commander. He was a prince of Israel. But sometime later, unbeknown to David, Abner was assassinated by Joab and his brother Abishai. Because Abner had killed their brother Ashael in battle. And so Joab and, and Abishai took revenge on their brother's death, and therefore they took revenge and killed Abner after David sent Abner away in peace. This dreadful act by Joab caused great pain and distress for David, but David had nothing to do with Abner's death. And so as David buries Abner in Hebron, 2 Samuel chapter 3, verses 31 and 2 tells us, And David said to all the people who were with him, Ring your clothes, gird yourself with sackcloth, and, and well before Abner. And King David went after the buyer, and they buried Abner in Hebron. And the king raised his voice and wept on Abner's grave. And all the people wept. From this text, we both see and feel the overwhelming grief that David was feeling over the death of Abner. For it was David who tells the people to tear their clothes, put on sackcloth, and cry before Abner as a sign of bereavement. And then it is David who leads a funeral procession by following the fire that is carrying the body of Abner. And after Abner is buried in heaven, it is David the king who raised his voice and wept over Abner's grave, and all the people wept alone. David lamented over Abner's death. He grieved. He grieved because Abner's death was untimely. He grieved because Abner's death was unexpected. He grieved because Abner's death was unwarranted. David grieved because this is not what he expected or he wanted or commanded to happen. And he grieved because it was for him and for Israel a great loss that could never be replaced. While the people were trying to consult David, David tells the people in verse 38, Do you not know that a commander, a prince, a great man has fallen in Israel this day? David eulogizes Abner with just these few words. But David, it was not only a great loss to him, but it's also a great loss to Israel. Because Abner's life was one that was devoted to service, and thus his death was not what David wanted or expected. I love I tell the story of David's eulogy, his grief over Abner's death, because in some ways it is both a reflection 
in a mirror of my own reaction and the reaction of so many members of Pleasant Hill Baptist Church. When, when we heard the news of Reverend Bibi McGriff's past, we grieved like David because his death was untimely and unexpected. Like David, we were in utter disbelief. Like David, we could not wrap our heads around the reason why. Like David, our hearts were broken. Our hearts were broken for Vanessa. Our hearts were broken for Rama and for Leanne and for Leslie. My heart was broken for our church family and for the McGriff family. And just like David wondered if we realized, if we realized that a great man, a great preacher, a great servant of Christ, a faithful servant of the kingdom of God and of the church has fallen. See, see, one thing is true is this with us, that we never know what we have until it's gone. We never know how important someone is to us until they pass into eternity. For death has a way of reminding us all of the power and the influence that, that people have upon our own lives. And therefore, there are several things that, that come to mind when I think about the life, when I think about the legacy, when I think about the faith walk that Reverend Benny McGriff had on all of us at Pleasant Grove Baptist Church. And the first thing that comes to mind is that Reverend Benny McGriff was simply a good man. All right. All right. Yes, he, was. he was a good man. He was the epitome and the definition of what makes a good man. He was just a good man. Let me just, he was just a good man. A good man who had so much goodness in him, there was no room for anything bad. In all the years that I've known Reverend Griffin, I never saw him angry. Never saw him get upset. Never saw him worried. Never saw him lose his cool. He was always cool under pressure. And particularly when he was presiding over prayer service on Wednesday evening. There were times that I got upset. On the conference call line. Now, Pastor Paul, when you're on the conference call, I mute your phone. I don't want to listen to the 6.30 p.m. news. <laughs> I don't know what you're having for dinner that night. I don't know what you're gossiping about in the background. Mute your phone. <laughs> I'm getting upset for him. But Reverend Griff was like this. I said, Reverend, get upset. Don't let me mute that phone. <laughs> He was so cool under pressure. He was the right man for the right, the right position. And the reason, and the reason, the reason Reverend Griff was so good is because he loved God. He loved God who was good to him. He loved serving the Lord. He loved serving God's people. He loved doing whatever was necessary to advance the kingdom of God for the glory of God. He loved encouraging people to grow in their faith wall. And so therefore, his goodness was just who he was as a disciple of Jesus Christ. And as we saw, beloved, we were all blessed by his goodness. Amen. But secondly, he was not only just a good man, but Reverend Griff was a great man who was faithful. He was not just a good man, he was a faithful man, he was a faithful servant of Jesus Christ. He was faithful to God and faithful to the calling that God had on his life. Reverend Griff was that person you could depend on. For you cannot depend on nobody else to show up, Reverend Griff would show up. If you ask, Reverend Griff would be there. If you ask him, Reverend Griff would do it. If you ask him, Reverend Griff would, would make sure whatever the assignment was, that the assignment would be completed. You could depend on Reverend Benny McGriff keeping his word. Why? Because he was faithful. And the one thing I can say without reservation is that when it came to residing over the Wednesday evening hour of power prayer meeting at 6.30 p.m., Reverend Benny McGriff was always there. He was there even when I wasn't there. He was always ready to reside. He was always ready to read a scripture, always ready to share a message, to offer a prayer, to give a word of encouragement, to welcome each person on the conference line, as you remind each person of the prayer line, if you press star six, the church can hear you now. <laughs> Reverend Benio Griff was always there, Wednesday after Wednesday, week after week, month after month, season after season, if, and even if he was out of town like he was the week of July 7th, 
visiting family or in a family unit, he was still doing ministry by presiding over the hour of power prayer meeting. And let me say this to Vanessa. On behalf of myself and the Pleasant Hill Baptist Church family, let me say thank you. Thank you for allowing your husband to reside on the Wednesday evening prayer service. Because I know it may not be always convenient. <laughs> you, I'm sure that time you want to do stuff with your husband. Listen, my wife Jackie, she gets it. <laughs> when, when your wife, when you're a minister's wife, I get it. But he was there. He gave of himself. He sacrificed so much. I just want to say thank you for supporting him. Thank you for encouraging him. Thank you for allowing him to be a blessing to us. And for him being a blessing to countless of people. Because the one thing that I know that you had your own plans at times, but he was always there every Wednesday. As you had with Sherry last night, by the very time you told him to slow down, he didn't slow down. Because he was committed. So thank you. On behalf of myself and the members of Pleasant Grove, thank you for supporting your husband doing such a great work for God's people. Yeah. Amen. But not only was he a good man, not only was he a faithful man, but Brett McGriff was a family man. Yeah. He loved his family. Now, now, there are two things I know that will make Brett McGriff smile. And maybe three. Number one, the first thing is talking about the Lord. Bragging on Jesus. He would say, oh, bragging on Jesus. He loved bragging on Jesus. The second thing is talking about his family. And the third thing, talking about food. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, I don't know if it's by design or by purpose or mistake, but when I drove around and I came around the corner, I saw the KFC sitting there. The first thought came to my mind, Reverend Benny McGrill. I can imagine that after service, that he really didn't even have to get in his car. He just walked his way. <laughs> right over the chaos. Am I telling a lie? Am I telling the truth? I don't, yeah, I'm sure. I can, I, can, I can see him doing it right now <laughs> on Sunday morning. <laughs> but that's the one thing I know that, 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 that without that, that, that Reverend McGriff, he loved you. He, he loved you. He loved his children. He, he was proud of their accomplishments. He was proud of Dr. Leanne McGriff. He was proud of Ronald McGriff. He was proud of Leslie McGriff. I remember I was there that day of the wedding, how, how proud he stood, how, how awesome he looked, and how he was officiating over that, that wedding, that day. How, how wonderful, how joyful it was, and how he even playing the clarinet with, with you, Ronald, on, on Sundays. You were up there. You stood by your dad. It probably was the last thing you wanted to do, but you stood there by your dad. You were there. And that's things, and guess what? That memory will always be with you for the rest of your life. That is a joy that you will always have. That's an experience that you will always have in your dad. It's something that God has given to you that you'll always treasure. He loved you guys. Yes. And he talked about you often. He, and he celebrated you. He bragged about you all the time. And that one thing I knew that brought him a lot of joy to him. And then, what can I say? Find this of the McGriff family. My goodness. The McGriff family said, Man, you, know, you know, I feel like I know each and every one of you personally. <laughs> Through Reverend Benny McGriff. Because he would talk about growing up in South Carolina. He talked about the McGriff household. He talked about his parents and siblings, his nieces, his nephews. He would talk about his great nephews, his great nieces. He talked about everyone and anyone that's connected to him and his family. You are a part of his life in so many ways. And he found joy in talking about his family. And he loved you all. And I know you all loved him. And as I tell my church every now and then, it is all about love. It is always about love. And love from beginning to end, it's always about love. And you don't have love. Listen, you, you are sad. You're in a sad state as a person. You don't have love. If you have somebody to love you, don't have any, someone you can love, you are in a sad state of affairs. Amen. But he knew he was loved by his family. They also were for he loved his family. But find this, my brothers and my sisters. Reverend Benny Griff was an officer and a gentleman. He was a gentleman after God's own heart. 
A gentleman who treated others with love and respect. A gentleman who, who loved living life and who loved people. A gentleman who loved serving God and by serving God's people. He was a gentleman who loved to eat and loved playing dominoes. A gentleman who loved to spend time with his family. A gentleman who loved to be in worship with God's people. And not only was Reverend McGriff a gentleman, but he was an officer in the Lord's army. He was a consummate officer, always ready to fulfill his next assignment. An officer who made sure whatever he was assigned to do, it was done right and the right for the right reason. An officer who encouraged others around him to be better and to do better. An officer who heard the voice of God say one day, who will go for us and who shall we send? And like Isaiah, Reverend Benjamin McGriff said, here am I, Lord, send me. I will go. And because Reverend McGriff gave his life to Jesus Christ a long time ago, because he believed, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not die but have everlasting life. Because Reverend Benjamin McGriff, that Jesus was his Lord and his Savior, Reverend Benjamin McGriff was willing to go wherever the Lord would lead him. He was an officer, he was a soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ who stayed on the battlefield for the Lord, lifting up the bloodstained banner in one hand and the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God in the other hand. That's why Reverend Griff could say, yes, I will go, God. I'll go because he trusted God. He, he believed in God the Father. He believed in God the Son. He believed in God the Holy Spirit. He stood on God's word. He trusted in God's promise. And he said yes to God because he was a soldier of Jesus Christ. He said, yes, I will go. I will go and I will serve as a trustee. I will go and I will teach Sunday school. I will go and I will lead the male chorus. I will go and I will preach God's word. I will go and I will help feed the hungry. I will go and I will encourage young men to grow in Christ. I will go and I will reside over Wednesday prayer service. I will go and I will assist the pastor at funerals and Sunday worship. I will go and I will cook breakfast at the one night service. I will go and be a co-teacher for kingdom men. I I would go and I would love and pray for church members. I would go and I would help those who are helpless and lift those who are discouraged. I would go and tell others about a God who can do miracles, about a God who can do the impossible, about a God who cares for us, about a God who loves us, about a love that never dies because the love is forever and ever. And he did. To Vanessa and Ronald and Leanne. Bless, bless them. To the McGriff and more families. God knows that your hearts are broken. Mm -hmm. He knows that tears will fill your eyes. He knows you feel like you're in the midst of a storm. But though your heart is broken, the tears fill your eyes. You may feel you're missing the soul. I come to tell you, hold on. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Amen. For even in the midst of your tears, even in the midst of your brokenness, you may be in the storm, but don't let the storm be in you. Amen. Because Jesus will give you peace. Yes, he even in your storm. And when he gives you peace, he can also give you reason to have joy yes, through your tears. God's words remind us weeping may endure for a night. It may endure for a season. Weeping may endure for a moment, but joy. Thank you, Jesus. Joy will come in the morning. So therefore, Vanessa, hold on. Hold on and wait for your morning to come. Hold on, Ronald, and wait for your morning to come. Hold on, Leanne, and wait for your morning to come. Hold on, Leslie, and wait for your morning to come. For when your morning comes, you will have joy. That's right. When your morning comes, God will give you peace. When your morning comes, the sun will shine brighter. When your morning comes, the sky will be blue. When your morning comes, the low will be light. When the morning comes, you will have joy. When the morning comes, hold on. Hold on. 
Hold on. Hold on. For joy will come in the morning. And you will have joy because you know that Reverend Biddy McGriff, your husband, your father, your brother, your uncle, your friend is all right. God will give you joy in knowing that he's all right. He's at rest. And he has eternal joy that will never end because he's home with Jesus. Reverend Griff is home. You know, the sad commentary of this is that the week of July 7th, Reverend Griff came to Lancaster for a family reunion. Little did he know, or anyone would know, that would be his last reunion with his family in Lancaster, South Carolina. But now he's having an eternal reunion with Christ and other family members of eternity. Right now he's playing dominoes and eating fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> he is alive for eternity in the presence of Almighty God. And so today, Reverend Richard Benny McGriff, a good man is born. Yeah. A good man who was faithful, a family man. A good man who was great has fallen. A man who was a great husband to Vanessa. A great father to Ronald, to Leanne, and Leslie. He was a great grandfather to Xavier and Craig. A great preacher. An officer and a soldier. That's right. Reverend Benny McGriff has finished his orders. Mm -hmm. He has completed his assignments. And his place is so at the sands of time. Mm -hmm. Rest on, Lieutenant Colonel. Yeah. Rest on, soldier. Rest on, my dear brother and friend. Take your eternal rest. Reverend Benny McGriff. Let us pray. Father, Father, we bow before your throne of grace. We say thank you. God, every now and then there comes one life into our lives that touches us in such a special way. Reverend Benny R. McGregor is such a life. Lord, we know that our lives will never be the same because of him. But Lord, we just thank you for what you did through him and for him and for us through him. For right now, Lord, I'm praying for his family. I'm praying for his wife, his children, I'm praying for his grandchild. I'm praying, oh God, for this family. That you, dear God, will be the God who give them comfort and strength as they face the days, the weeks, the months, and the years before them. May they, O oh God, know of your comfort and your peace that passes all understanding. And God, we thank you for the promise that is ours with all those that have died in the Lord, that they will live again. We do bless your name. We give you honor and we give you glory. Keep each of us down. Hold us, so oh God, closer to your bosom. Love us in our pain and keep us by your grace. For this we pray and we ask. In Jesus' name. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honor Guard will now render full military honors, commencing with the firing of three rounds of rifle fire, followed by the playing of taps, concluding with 
the folding and presentation of the military flag. During taps, please rise if you're able. Place your right hand over your heart. If you're military or ex-military, you may render a salute. Thank you for your cooperation.
his service to his country. My friends, this does include the bell services for Mr. Benny Grip. I'd like to give a special thanks to Pastor Forsyth, to the panel of guest ministers, to the First Washington Baptist Church family, and to each of you who took part in this service. And my friends, this instrument will be at the National Cemetery at Fort Jackson in Columbia, South Carolina. Thank you.
and the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, cover ye one another with these words. Shall we pray? O God, eternal Father, the maker of heaven and earth, the giver, the sustainer of all human life, we bow down to your widow and to your door of grace. We say thank you, O God, for the promise that is ours through Jesus Christ, that all those who believe in Jesus Christ, that they will live again. And so, Father, as we commit the remains of our beloved, forever bidding be glorified to you, we know, dear God, that his soul rests eternally now with you. We pray now for his wife, Vanessa, for his children, Ronald, Leanne, and Leslie. We pray, dear God, that you will continue to comfort them and strengthen them. Be their God for them. And be, O oh God, for them that God can meet them in the hard and the broken places of their life. And Lord, we thank you for your promises of love and grace. And Father, your word to teach us that man should always pray and never faint. And may we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us for our trespasses, as we give the those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. And now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, and the love of Christ be with us now and forevermore, until we meet again. Amen. to the family. Don't think of him as gone away. His journey's just begun. Life holds so many phases that this earth is only one. Think of him as living in the heart of those he's touched. For someone's love is never lost. And Benny McGriff was loved very, very much. On behalf of the staff and management of Crawford Fenner Home, like to present your family with this small token of love. May God be each of you and we love you. And please accept this on behalf of his family. <laughs> May you and his family be back to this year. My friends, there will be a repass following these services at the Key Springs Community Center at the Pastor Real Bless the Food. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for the gift of food. We thank you for the gift of love and the gift of friends. We pray that you will bless the food that's been prepared for us. May it nourish us, may it strengthen us, may it heal us, may it empower us. May, O oh God, enable us to do your will, to do your work in the earth. And may be all to your glory. Bless it now by your Holy Spirit and sanctify it for our good, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.